Hello and welcome to this Power BI tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. Today we're going to look at the current top end slicer function. The official definition returns a given number of top rows according to a specified expression. But what we can look at is, you know, our products and the sales that each product contributes to. So, so the, the percentage of those. So we want to see where our best selling products are and how they contribute to our total sales. And what we're going to do today, we're going to take our hard-coded top-end DAX function and we're going to make this dynamic and give the end users much more opportunities to make actionable insights with their data in an instant. So this is the data we're working with. Very simple mock data I've created. We've got a nice dashboard that could be built upon. But really, we're looking at the total sales by region and then we're using this top N to show the top product sales. And we can choose how many top products we're looking at. So you can see here in my DAX, I've got top end wrapped within calculate where total sales is our filter context. And really all we need to do now within our top end is specify the number of products we want to look at. In this case, I'm looking at three products and you can see this makes up 76% of our total sales in California. And really the only the only commands we need to provide after are parameters. We're just saying that we want to look at this within the new sales data, total sales context and descending, which just means within high to low um, values, where ascending would be low to high. So we can change this about, chop and change this, but it's actually quite simple DAX, but it's really powerful. So you can see if I was to change from three products to one, if we look at the top row in California, you can see this best selling product makes up 44% of my total sales or $1,129. So that's massive. So if we were part of a company, we were analyzing this data, we could say, right, we need to push and capitalize on this. We need to dedicate more, more hours here and get this product selling. So it's really valuable, but everything's hard coded as standard. And it's worth noting that to get this percent of total sales, really simple DAX, all I need to do is take the, the top product sales, that calculate and top end function I've just shown you. And then we just need to divide that over our total sales, which is just simply a sum of our sales. Okay, so as we said, the issue was that I've hard coded in a value. So I was showing three, then I changed to our best product and we were looking at the share of the total sales. Now, if we want to make this dynamic, we can use a table, a bit of DAX and a workaround to make this work. And the end users can then do this by themselves. They can look at, you know, how the top five or 50 or 100 products compare to that top product and where we should be dedicating our time. So if we click enter data, we can create a whole new table and we have to name this table. So we'll just name it something like top end selection. Obviously we name the column. So again, we want to make this as specific as possible. So I'll go ahead and name this top end value because we're actually going to have a measure point. To this. So we want to remember. And all I need to do now in this table is state the increments that I want this to go up in. So I've got a small data set that I created. You could have 500 products. So you might want to go up by 50, 100, 150, 200 and have the end user select it that way. But for me, one to six is fine. Just remember all we're doing is stating the increments that we want that to increase in. So we have our table, that's great. But within this top end selection table, we'll click new measure. And what we want to do is essentially with our slicer that we're going to use to control this, everything's disconnected between the, the top end and our sales data because we don't have a unique identifier to connect the two. So we're going to write an easy measure. We're just going to say, for the selected value that's in the slicer, we want this to point towards that top end value table. And we'll look at how we can connect this shortly, but essentially we're just connecting everything up and helping Power BI in that sense. 
quite simple now. We're just beginning to piece everything together and connect everything up. So we obviously need a slicer to help the end users control the top end products. I'm going to speed this up as I go through the formatting. And then once we have the slicer, we're actually just going to edit our previous, our initial hard-coded top product sales top end measure that you see represented within this column in the table to point towards our dynamic top end selection slicer. So I'll format this, I'll speed through it, and I'll add a card so that we can see how many top end products the end user is currently selected. And we'll go from there. Okay, that's great. So now we have a card with the number of products selected measure in. We have the slicer with the top end value, and these are connected together. So you can see the measure and the slicer are working together. However, this isn't affecting the table, which is what we want it to do, so that the end user can draw the insights. Well, this is because we just need to edit our previous hard-coded DAX measure. We use the comments here. And we want to point that towards our new top end selection table. So I'm going to use the, the comments and say what we're doing here is we're making the, the new dynamic top end function point towards our top end selection table. And it's very simple now. All we need to do is replace that previous hard coded one or two or three value at the top of our top end function to that number of products selected measure in that expression. And now, when we click on items, so for example, you can see the, the table starts with nothing and as I select options, it dynamically changes. So the user now across their region can say, okay, you know, my, my top two products in Illinois is making up 60%, three, 75%. And you can start to see, you know, my top four products might make up 90% of my sales, you know, I, I don't need to focus on anything else and so on. And we can now make data-driven decisions very quickly. And, and that's what we want to do with that. We want to add insights to our data and allow people to have the control to improve their business. So this is an excellent function. It's very dynamic and you should explore it and try it out. As usual, if you like this or find it helpful, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.